It is correct. As I'm uh, watching Josh do the yeah. calculations <laughs> on his finger there. Get my abacus out. That's uh, right. No. So there's a lot to come ahead. Uh, one of the things coming up um, in just a, f a few oh, seconds. Minus five minutes, 30 seconds. Oh, I see. NSC. Go, NSC. Spacecraft on internal power and timer set for T0 of 1150 Zulu. Roger. OS, start list data capture. Roger. Fantastic. All steps are complete prior to terminal count. LC switch is ready. Awesome. So things are really starting to pick up here. You're going to hear yes. more and more chatter on those nets there. That call was to say that Perseverance is powered and ready to go, which is a phenomenal call. Yeah, yeah a couple things happened during that time, right, is a launch conductor, ULA's launch conductor, Scott Barney, pulled the whole ULA team. They were all go. We got to the hear third the, of our five teams. The third of our five teams. We got to hear the end of that where the range was clear to proceed, and uh, ULA's launch director, Bill Collin, gave the authority to uh, go for launch this morning at 7.50 a.m., then we got to hear from the the JPL spacecraft team that they are the on, fourth team the fourth team that they are on internal power and uh, timers are set. Uh, they are targeting a liftoff of 7:50 a.m. this morning. So all things are looking good for us, Joshua. This morning, it's so you know we talk about being nervous and excited. This is right here where we're nervous and excited. Yes, uh, there are a lot of things happening as we get ready to count down. Uh, to uh, the liftoff this morning. We have about 15 seconds left in this hold before we pick up the count. Yeah, we're going to listen into that. Uh, the fifth team, the one we haven't mentioned yet, is the Department of Energy, who is responsible for the I MMRTG, the power source for Perseverance. Counting. Three, two, one, mark. Awesome. So this is now the terminal countdown. This is that time when things become more and more automated over the next couple of minutes, few minutes. And the, the energy is building, but the focus is increasing exponentially. Yeah, as Tori said during his interview, you know, the teams are very disciplined, very focused on what they're doing, the operational sequence of events that they're following. They are making sure everything happens, especially in this T minus four and counting uh, period, because there's a lot of things they have to do. They have to finish uh, topping the vehicle, make sure that all the tanks, uh, first stage, second stage on Centaur are at flight pressures and full of fuel ready to go for this morning. They have to make sure the FTS system is armed and uh, ready for personnel safety just in case uh, so that the range can do that. They have to check the uh, electrical and avionics systems. They have to make sure that the uh, flight computer has all the uh, information it needs to place Mars 2020 into the orbit it has to. So a lot of things going on. Exciting time for the team right now, but uh, again, staying focused and following that procedure they've got. Three minutes. As we look ahead to post liftoff, I want to kind of preview for you what's going to happen because there's going to be a lot going on. You're not going to hear much from us. You'll actually be hearing from the ULA flight commentator, Jesse Gonzalez. Uh, he'll be kind of giving those calls past liftoff that will walk us through maximum dynamic pressure and into SRB separation and then into fairing separation, booster separation, and then the first main engine ignition of the Centaur, Centaur yes. uh, RL-10. And so then you'll kind of hear us jump back in and help provide some more context to what's going on. Uh, we encourage you to stay with us for the rest of the show, though. There's a ton more content we have to bring you, and we are far from over. I want to emphasize that the countdown to Mars is not done at zero today. The countdown to Mars ends in February, when Mars 2020 safely delivers perseverance and ingenuity to the surface of the red planet. So we're going to let you listen in now and enjoy the last couple minutes of the, the process of launching a rocket. One minute fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One minute fifty five. Launch sequencer start. One minute fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur LO two. So there we heard the fueling is is One wrapping minute up. 40. Yep, fueling is wrapping launch up. Uh, team is gone. Launch enabled is done. Launch conductor sequence is ready to go. They're getting ready to turn the vehicle over to auto FPS sequence uh, at T minus 31 seconds. Um, so that's a big thing that they're getting done here. At uh, T minus 25 seconds, we will hear the team uh, give their final goes that everything is ready and One the launch 20. vehicle is uh, ready to lift OCU off and perform arm. this mission. SCS count started. One minute 15. Produce CCS for launch. Roger. One minute 10. Ten valves locked. One minute. 
Rock, report range status. Range green. That's good to hear, Joshua, right that there. Public safety there is accounted for. The FTS system, uh, there you see on your screen, a beautiful shot. Uh, the skies look great. There is little wind um, happening. You'd be able to see more of the, the venting. Um, if there were wind, the trail of that, of that venting. So uh, we're yeah. ready to go. And actually, that's an important seconds. point. The reason we don't see that Stable venting is the vent valves have been locked up to put flight pressure into the tanks. And as we just heard, they're stable at step three, which means the tanks are ready to go. And uh, here at about five seconds, we will hear seconds. the team ECS reduced for launch. give the final go. 25 seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Mars 2020. And there we go. We are ready to go lift off this morning, Joshua. Eight, seven, six, five, five. four. Engine ignition, two, one, zero. And liftoff. As the countdown to Mars continues, the perseverance of humanity launching the next generation of robotic explorers to the Red Planet. And Atlas TU has gone to closed loop control. Coming up on 30 seconds into flight, the RD-180 is throttling down as expected. Engine response looks good. And Mach 1, Atlas V is now supersonic. And passing 45 seconds into flight, vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Passing one minute into flight, the RD-180 is throttling back up as expected. Engine response looks good. At this time in flight, the SRB chamber pressures remain nominal. The RD-180 pump speed and fuel injector pressures are responding well to demands on the engine. Standing by for SRB burnout shortly. And we have burnout on all four SRBs. Burnout pressure signatures look good. Standing by for SRB jettison shortly. And we have a good indication of SRB jettison of all four SRBs. And the vehicle has gone to closed loop guidance. Vehicle body rates are responding nominally at this time. And coming up on two and a half minutes into flight, uh, the RD-180 is throttled down slightly as expected. Engine response continues to look good. At this time, the vehicle is uh, 50 miles in altitude, uh, 85 miles downrange, traveling at 6,000 miles per hour. And the Centaur Reaction Control System is now pressurizing to flight levels. And just past three minutes into flight, the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 2.5 G acceleration limit for payload fairing jettison. Engine response and vehicle acceleration look good. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison and Centaur forward, forward load reactor deck jettison. And the RD-180 is throttled back, is throttling back up to attain a 4.6G acceleration. Uh, engine response continues to look good.
And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence to thermally condition the RL-10 for operation. Standing by for Biko shortly. Biko is the Biko's the call for booster engine. And we have Biko booster engine cutoff standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of Atlas Centaur separation. So there you're seeing live footage. And we from have the Mach one. Uh, RL ten operating parameters look good. Uh, <clears throat> Chamber pressures are stable. This will be the first of two burns for today's mission. Uh, this first burn will pro be approximately seven minutes in length. So, Mick, that's pretty exceptional footage there. That's live video. Uh, we will see that switch over shortly into an animation that kind of helps let us know what's happening with the rocket, but right there, uh, a beautiful liftoff. Uh, fun to feel that rumble in the building here as we proceed toward. And if you recall, that mission on the West Coast took about 17 yeah, seconds to, to get past tower. So with those four solids today, this thing really got out of here and on its way. And it's, uh, as we hear from Jesse, everything's looking nominal and all uh, vehicle parameters are, are within the design limits. And, and we're getting ready to come up on a main engine start for that first burn that Jesse was talking about. Yeah, so recapping this countdown to Mars, uh, the stations begin to be filled up this morning just after midnight. Uh, preparations, fuelings, powering up uh, all the way through that, that liftoff that happened. Uh, I think, Mick, uh, it wasn't precisely on time. I think you said it was like 10 milliseconds early. Um, so it's pretty much dead on. Yeah, dead on. This team does a great job. As I said, they're very focused, very disciplined, as, as Tori also said, courageous. Uh, they have done a lot of work to get us to this point today uh, through this pandemic, changed how they did some of their work, uh, you know, made adjustments as needed, uh, a lot of cleaning, a lot of things, a lot of wearing their face masks, uh, doing all kinds of things. And so this is an exciting time, not only for the JPL team in Mars 2020, but everybody that's worked this mission and for the country and the agency. So this is exciting to see. We still have a long way to go, Joshua. Yes. Before spacecraft separation. Yeah, we had a really quiet countdown today, which is phenomenal uh, that we got off the ground on time. And we are proceeding now that we are in the middle of the first burn. Uh, it's tough to make out, but that engine is lit and it's firing. Um, so we are in motion. There you go. There's that animation we talked about. The telemetry there as we switch to a TDRS compatible data format. Uh, TDRS. Overall telemetry quality is uh, very good. The space tracking system. Um, so there you go. This is not an actual video, but this is an animation that's driven by real data. So although we're not actually seeing the engine on screen right now, uh, we can see that the engine is lit, and that is driven by the data that says that the engine is truly lit, and we're in this burn. Yeah, the launch vehicle continues to send telemetry to the launch team uh, via the TDRS network, uh, as you mentioned, uh, and that allows